Hey everybody, it's ALG. Welcome in everyone back to Let's Play Sweet Coden 3. In the last episode, we left off with the Harmonians invasion. And here we can talk to Sana, and if you want, you can organize people into your party already. Now, there's really no reason that you'd want to do this now. However, the option is available to you. You can always do it in advance. So, uh, basically, you can go ahead and talk to other people in order to get the storyline going on, so let's go ahead and continue. Alright, so basically we could just talk to Caesar, Bur or Caesar Silverberg, I kind of got uh, tongue-tied there. Sheesh, man, I don't even know how they uh, even arrived here so quickly, jeez. Uh, now, you can hold on for a second, and I don't know why I w you would select, no, I'm not going, but whatever. Alright. Now, to start off with this battle, this battle is unwinnable. And to my knowledge, you cannot lose any Stars of Destiny here. So... Yeah. Basically what happens, the enemy keeps respawning, and there's basically no way <laughs> you can beat these guys. These guys are actually very overpowered as is, and the way it currently is, we are in no current shape to fend these guys off. Crap. Oh, jeez. Well, first off, it goes into autopilot for you in first turn. Basically, what they're doing is spreading the units out. Very odd way of doing it. But I see what the computer is trying to do here. Uh, pfft. Oh, there they go again. You'll uh, constantly see the Zexa Knights and the Grasslanders bickering over random stuff during major battles. But it really does kind of uh, add more to the story as they try to uh, begin to trust each other. Even though it is a very bumpy process, uh, it still does add depth to uh, the development or the... Of the relationship of the relationship between the Grasslanders and the Zexans. So I don't know. Let's move them up here. I don't know why they moved them down here. And yeah, let's move them up here. Let's not have Beecham all by himself up there. That's not a very good idea. And we shall end this. Oh, for cr- Ugh, I hate it when it covers like that. Uh... Yeah, let's do Bazba. Bazba. Now, these guys are gonna be a bit more powerful because of the cover, so... Ouch. Just kind of have to brace yourselves. Ah, oh, jeez. Ah, oh, goddamn! They just went right for the leader. They didn't even hesitate. That was really bad. Um. All right, as you can see, uh. Dupa is pretty much under rage status. Was that the rage status, or was that... Could have sworn it was rage status. I don't know. Ouch. Ah! Total annihilation. God damn. Yeah, we're not going to win at this rate.
Yeah, but Dupa's already dead. How is he even talking? <laughs> oh, I guess he's just mortally wounded. Ah, oh, crap. Oh, uh, everybody's carrying back the wounded. Yeah, that was a rough battle, even though two units died. But, <laughs> it's whatever. There's a lot of wounded everywhere. So this is really one of the first uh, cutscenes that we see uh, former enemies actually helping each other out and tending to each other's wounds. This is hell. Yeah, that was a very effective preemptive strike against us. Man, I'll tell you what, this is actually uh, one of my uh, more, more favorite cutscenes within the game because it, it really uh, d displays the struggle of you know everybody just trying to unite and get the Grasslanders to realize this has more to do than just them, you know? And it's, it's, this not, it's not only the Zexans too, but it's a lot of other people as well, which we'll find out later on, so I will go ahead and enter this cutscene. Oh, don't even start like that. Dupa, your unit died. You shouldn't even... <sighs> Jesus. I know, right? I mean, our our soldiers got messed up, and you're still thinking about, you know, like, Zex... Vine del Zexe versus Grassland when Harmonia's raping your ass? I mean, come on, you're gonna need all the help you can get. But, big-headed Grasslanders think that they're the shit, but, you know... There's definitely not going to uh, be any progress whatsoever if uh, Zexans and Grasslanders don't unite, which is definitely what we're seeing here. I mean, we're pretty much forced to fight together. Oh, see what I'm saying? I mean, they really have no choice. They're backed up against a corner. They really have no time to bullshit around like this. Yeah, war is a reality now. It's time to sacrifice pride and start whooping some ass. Yeah, um, if we don't think of something quick, we may be in a lot of deep shit soon. It's a completely new battalion. But something is fishy about this. Yeah, see, Chris Chris might know something. But something definitely is fishy about this. Hey, Lucia. Uh, they still think they can beat them without the help of the Zexans. Well, it's not really the help of the Zexans. I know we've been saying that all episode, but it's more from the help of the uh, Zexan knights, not the Zexans themselves. It's kind of confusing, but um, the Zexans, believe it or not, are different uh, from the Zexan knights. I mean, you do have like the Zexan 
sort of like guard thing going on. And then you have the knights, which remember, the knights are their own separate faction. Even though they uh, are under the Zexan banner, they are like almost like a separate country. Not a separate country, but I don't know, it's hard to explain. And it's going to take so much to convince these guys, but basically, you know, they have to get their asses beat in order for them to learn, so, you know, we just got to do what we got to do here. Another job. Ah, so Apple proposes the idea that just like what happened at the Great Hollow, or the incident that happened with that, is that they conjured up phantoms on their own army against us, which actually sounds like a really sick idea. <laughs> I actually like the concept behind that though for some reason. I don't know. It's just like you can all you can you like really like imagine Mass Bishop and company to take like only like a few uh Harmonian soldiers and then basically just make like hundreds of like copies of them and like send them into like Grassland cuz that's basically what they've been doing. According to basically what we've seen here sort of like the whole Wizard of Oz thing where it's like you know even though you see like this huge scary hologram or whatever there's always some midget dude like behind the scenes running the thing and it's really not that big as it seems I know that was a very weird analogy but whatever it'll have to do Aha. Uh -huh. And as we all remember, Ayla traced uh, the sorceress uh, right before the village burned down. So. Alright, sounds like a plan. See, Caesar, Caesar's good. He's, he, he, he's a good person because al he always has a solution to whatever problems you may have. And as ludicrous as it may seem... It always works, cause it's cause it's a Silverberg. <laughs> I mean, but that's how every Silverberg. Well, even Shu, who wasn't a Silverberg, but that's how basically every sweet code and strategist operates. Okay, so uh, uh, okay, so I think you can now choose your party again, but this time you'll have to ask Apple first. Alright, so I advise you leave Sergeant Joe in there, because we'll need him uh, a little later on for some uh, recruiting. But maybe I'm jumping a little bit too far ahead of myself. Uh, I don't know, we'll see. I didn't know Jimbo was a selectable... Are you kidding me? Where has he been all this time? How is he even there? What? That's weird. Okay, so we have FUBAR, or Fucked Up Beyond All Recognition, which is basically describes our situation adequately. I must agree. Alright, so I don't really feel like having a support person for this. It's not really going to matter. But, uh... Yep. We should be all set there, but I will be saving first, and I might as well just end it here. So this is ALG. Signing off, and I will see you guys next time.